book of Mark, chapter 14. And uh, I know we are almost, it's almost 8 o'clock. And uh, I'll try and keep short. And uh, I would say what Elizabeth Taylor told to her eighth husband, I won't keep you long. <laughs> I wish that joke was mine. I could claim it as mine, but it's not. One of the preacher in Marietta, he says this joke all the time. And I was getting ready to say a COVID joke, but it would take two weeks for you to get it. So, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Book of Mark, chapter 14, we'll start our uh, reading in verse 3, and uh, we'll read through verse 9. And if you have the right Bible, it's in page 1207. Amen? <laughs> verse 3, the Bible reads, And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold, sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. She hath done what she could, she is come aforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the portion of your word we read this evening. Lord, I need your help to share what you have laid in my heart this evening. Lord, open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds to grasp your word. Lord, help us to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Lord, bless this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is one of those events that is recorded in all the four Gospels. And if uh, the feeding of the 5,000 is one of those events which is like recorded in all the four Gospels, but in a little different way. Matthew records it different. Luke, John, Mark, record, they record them different with their, how Holy Spirit led them to write using their own personality. And now this, the anointing of Jesus is also mentioned in all the four Gospels, but in a little different way. And if, if we read and study all those four Gospels about the anointing of Jesus, we'll find similar details regarding a woman, there's an alabaster jar, there's a pregnant ointment, and there is an anointing. But if a critical reader, a Bible scholar, or a serious student of the Word of God, if he studies, he'll come to a conclusion and he will say, there are three separate anointings at three separate locations with three different characters using three different methods at three separate times with four different attitudes being displayed by the observer for many different reasons. I will therefore refrain from solving that matter. And I want to bring a message that would be a challenge to each one of us, whether we be young, old, a kid, boy, girl, woman, man, I want God to challenge you through this passage this evening. I want us to turn to John chapter 12, a similar passage, and uh, just for some clarification of this, what is going on. And uh, it's always good to have different perspectives, right? If you ask uh, um, the preacher in Marietta, how, what do you think about wisdom? Oh, he would say, he's a fine He's smart, he's a young man, good looking. And uh, if you ask uh, my sisters, oh, they would say, wisdom is the most irritating, annoying, disturbing brother in the whole world. <laughs> and if you ask some girls back in the college, oh, they would say, wisdom is the most handsome. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's always good to have different uh, perspectives. And we'll read in verse uh, 1 of chapter 12 of the book of John. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. 
There they made him a supper and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spike not very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my bearing, had she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Let us go back to Mark chapter 14. This is, if we see in John chapter 11, Lazarus was dead. And now in John chapter 12, Lazarus is alive. Jesus rose him from the dead. And I believe they are kind of having a victory celebration. This scene is in Bethany, just a few miles east of Jerusalem. And uh, Jesus is soon about to experience the passion. And he decides to hang out at Simon's house. Simon was once a leper and probably he was healed by Jesus of that horrible disease. And now... I believe they are kind of having a victory celebration. If we see uh, Lazarus is there in that room, Jesus is there, Simon is there, and the Bible mentions there are many men who were gathered in that room. And all of a sudden, a woman comes, Mary, she comes, and she breaks an alabaster jar, a perfume box, and she pours it on Jesus. Now, the moment she did that, she did two things. Number one, she broke a social custom. A woman in those days, in that culture, in those traditions, was supposed to stay behind the scenes. She was not supposed to come in the place where men are gathered. She was supposed to be covered and stay behind the scenes. But when she just came, she broke the box and she poured it on Jesus' head. Number one, she broke a social custom. Second, she broke a super costly perfume. The Bible says it was 300 pence. 300 pence would make about $50 in our money. And $50 was a man's, an average working man's full year of wage. And that's what the cost of that perfume was. And Mary, she comes to that room, she breaks that alabaster jar, and she pours it on Jesus. And the moment she did that, she hears a chorus of criticism, which was led by Judas. He said it was a complete waste. It did not serve anything good. It, was, it, did, not serve, it, it did not feed anyone. It did not put clothes on anyone's back. It did not serve anything good. That was a complete waste. But while Judas called it a waste, Jesus called it a worship. While everyone criticized her, Jesus commended her. Now what did Mary do that made Jesus say these words? Look at verse 6. Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. And in verse 9, he continues to say, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she had done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. In other words, Jesus is saying, you have done a good work on me. And you have done such a good work on me that I will never forget and I will never let anyone forget what you have done for me. And wheresoever gospel shall be preached, this also that shall be spoken what you have done for me. And here we are 2,000 years later speaking of what Mary did for Jesus. Now, what did Mary do that, that made Jesus say those words? I want to hear those words from Jesus when I stand in front, in front of the judgment seat of Christ. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Now, what did Mary do that made Jesus say those words? And what we can do? Can we ask that question to ourselves? Have I done enough for God? To what extent do I need to go in my Christian service that I can hear those words? You have done a good work on me. Now, what did Mary do? The, 
answer is right there in that passage. Look at verse 8. She had done what she could. That's it. She had done what she, what she could. What Mary did that made Jesus say those words, that pleased Jesus, that made him say those words. She had done what she could. I just want to point out three simple statements out of that one statement. Number one, do what you can. Do what you can. Now Martha and Mary, they were two sisters. Their brother Lazarus, he was dead and now he is alive. Their family was broken and now their family is restored. Both of them are filled with love and gratitude for what Jesus has done for their family. And now if we see in different passages, uh, we see Martha served, Martha served, Martha served. Now why would the Holy Spirit make such an emphasis on recording that statement, Martha served? I believe Martha was a super practical lady of that time. She was good in cooking. She was good in serving. She was good in um, cleaning. She was good in showing hospitality. She was a super practical lady of that time. But the Bible doesn't say anything about Mary. Maybe she was a dumb, just like my sisters. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> By the way, my sisters, they split my name into two just to keep me humble. And they call me wisdom, which is wisdom, wise, and dumb. And more of a dumb <laughs> than wise. So I keep calling them the other way around. <laughs> so um, maybe, maybe Mary was thumbs when it comes to getting things done. The Bible doesn't say anything about it. But now Martha and Mary both were filled with what Jesus has done for their family, for their broken family, restored their family. Now, if we say that we love God and if we say that we are filled with gratitude for what God has done for us, we cannot just say it with our lips. Are we proving it with our life? Are we, are we just coming and saying, oh, how I love Jesus. But are we living the way we should that pleases Jesus? Are we doing what we can? Now, I want us to notice this. What Mary did was already in her possession. What Mary did was already, she did not go out somewhere and she, Maybe she was envious of her sister, Martha. She was doing everything. Maybe she could have thought, I don't know what, what to do. M Martha is good in everything. I, I cannot do what Martha is doing. Maybe I will, I will, she did not say that I will go and learn those qualities and learn to cook, learn to serve, and then come back and then serve Jesus. She did not do that. All of a sudden, she remembers that she has somewhere hidden, uh, alabaster jar the bible scholars still argue about how she got that but she remembers that she has has it somewhere and she goes and brings it she breaks it she pours it on jesus what she did for the lord was already in her possession now what god wants from you what god wants from me he has already given us in the first place are we doing what we can I remember uh, during the Christmas time, me and my sisters used to go to our dad and ask for some money to buy some gifts. And he, he would give us some money and um, we would go to the store, buy a gift, wrap it, write a card on it from Wisdom, Gracie and Glory. And we used to go um, to our dad on Christmas morning and say, dad, 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 this is the gift that we bought with your money. No, we didn't say that, but we said, this is the gift that we bought for you, dad. Do you realize what we were doing that Christmas morning? We were just giving back dad what he has given us in the first place. What God wants from your life, he has given you already in the first place. What Mary did for Jesus was already in her possession. What God wants from you and me, he has already given us 
in the first. It is already in our possession. Now God, now Jesus did not want anything from Mary, what he wanted from Martha. Now we may be sitting there and saying, I cannot do this. I'm not worthy of doing this. I'm not, I cannot sing. I cannot play the piano. I cannot do this. And we all have a tendency of just feeling so unworthy of doing. But God did not just save you just to save you. He saved you with an eternal purpose in your life. What he wants from you, he has already given you in the first place. He wants your life as a service to him, as a sacrifice to him. But are we doing what we can? If we see um, in the Old Testament, if we see different examples, Elisha, the widow, she came to Elisha and said, my husband died and he has left a great debt on us. And the creditors are come, they're about to take my sons away and enslave them and make them work and get the money out of them. Help us. Elisha said, tell your sons to go and borrow barrels from your neighbors and tell them not to borrow a few. And they went, they brought the barrels, so they went inside the room, they started filling out the barrels with that one pot of oil. That, that widow was even, even embarrassed to mention. But when Elisha asked, what is in your house? Just a pot of oil. They filled the barrels. They, the Bible says they sold it, they paid the debt, and they lived for their life. What is in your house? Are you doing what you can? If you remember Moses, when God asked Moses to lead his people, lead his nation, Moses gave seven different reasons why he cannot do it. Seven different excuses why he cannot do it. But God asked, what is that in your hand? Moses said, this is just a piece of wood, Lord, that I broke about years ago. And I'm, I, I pull, the sheep off, pull the sheep and chase the wolves off. This is just a piece of wood, Lord. God said, put that down. And that stick, that rod became the rod of God. What is it that is in your hand? What is it that is in your house? Are you doing what you can? Are you doing what God wants from you? What God wants from me? He has already given us in the first place. I remember uh, the story of a little girl. She was walking by the seashore. And she saw some starfishes that came and were left on the shore. They were not able to get back into the water. So this little girl started picking up the fishes and throwing them back into the water. And there comes a man and he yelled at this girl and said, hey girl, what you doing? And this girl replied, I'm trying to save this fish's life. And that man yelled back again and said, but you can't save them all. You can't save them all. I love what this girl said. I can save this one. I can save this one. I can save this one. I, sh I shared slides with showing millions of people in India. I may not be able to reach those millions, but am I faithful in reaching this one? Am I faithful in reaching this one? Your city, I don't know the size of population, but there are thousands of people. Everyone don't know God. Your neighbors don't know God. They don't go to church. Your job is not done. Are you doing what you can? It is important to be involved in local mission as, as it is important to be involved in global mission. Are you doing what you can? Do what you can. And number two, do all that you can. Do all that you can. If you read that passage, um, that uh, ointment was stored in such a jar, a clay jar, and its preservation that it, it does not leak or anything, its preservation increased its worth. And the Bible says she, she, she did not come with a, she did not come with a spoonful, like she will use some and she will keep some for her. Maybe she might have saved that for her marriage, or maybe she might have Save that for her um, 
old age that she may live of it. But when she came, when she saw Jesus, she could not hold any drops back. The Bible says she broke it and she poured it. See, she spilled it on Jesus. Are we holding back drops when it comes to serving the Lord? Are there people not being blessed just because we did not do our own? Are, are there people not being saved just because I held back some drops? Are we doing what we can? Are we doing all that we can? Preacher, do you ever go with the ushers while uh, taking the offering? I don't think so. If you try it, it may double up the offering. Now, now, why I'm now why I'm saying that is, Jesus was once standing by the treasury, and he was looking at what everyone is giving. There came governors; they gave their share, tithes, offering. There came rulers; there came businessmen, big people of that city. They came and gave their share, and now there walks a widow with just two mites in her hand and she just put put two mites in that box Jesus was watching everyone Jesus watched this widow giving two mites and Jesus said the worth of what you have given is more than what everyone else has given because she gave her all are we doing what we can are we doing all that we can. And last, are we doing it now? Do it now. Now, if you if you remember the resurrection morning, resurrection morning, you, you, we see three women on their way um, to the tomb. And if you just step out in front of their way and if you ask them, hey, ladies, where are you going? They would, they would reply in this way. They would say, our, our Lord God was crucified the other day and we didn't get a chance to anoint his body. Because in Jewish culture, it was um, a tradition that if that person is sick and is about to die, his body was to be anointed before death. Or if he died, his body was to be anointed after death. But, but the anointing of the body was necessary. And now these ladies are on their way to the tomb with an expectation that they will go and ask the Roman soldiers to remove the stone and go inside and anoint Jesus' body. But when they reached there, the tomb was empty. Jesus rose from the dead already and the tomb was empty. It was too late for them to anoint Jesus' body. Now, I believe Mary did not know what she is doing. She did not have an idea about what she is doing. But Jesus confirms in verse 8, she had done what she could. She is come aforehand to anoint my body to the burial. If I believe if Jesus' body was not anointed at, at this time, it was too late for the ladies that went on the resurrection morning to anoint his body. Are we doing all that we can? Are we doing it now? Or what are we waiting for? Every second, every minute, every day, thousands of people are dying and going to hell. Are we doing our part in reaching those lost souls? Are we doing what we can? I, I asked us to jump to two different passages because Mark mentions, and I'm finishing with this, Mark mentions um, Mary poured the ointment on Jesus' head. And John says Mary poured the ointment on Jesus' feet. I don't know what exactly happened, but it might have happened. Mary poured the ointment of Jesus' head and the oil traveled all throughout the body and the oil um, is about to touch the ground. And I believe Mary did it in a haste. 
And if she was prepared, she would have come with a towel to wipe the extra oil. But I believe she did it in a haste. She had to do something to show her gratefulness. She did it in a haste. And now she is watching the oil dripping from Jesus' feet. And she decides to make a towel of, from her hair. The hair of a woman is considered as her glory. The moment she did that, she gave all of her glory to God. Now God just does not want something from us or some part of us. God wants us. Are we ready to give our all? And the Bible says the moment she did that, the moment she took her hair and she wiped the feet of Jesus, the house was filled with the odor of the oil. Are we ready to empty ourselves for the Lord? Are we ready to give our all for the Lord and ready to be filled with him, with his presence, with his blessing? Are we doing what we can? Are we doing all that we can? Are we doing it now? This is just a very simple sermon, very simple outline. But a challenge to each one of us. Are we doing what we can? Are we doing all that we can? Are we doing it now? Whatever you give to the Lord, He will give back. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, for this time. Thank you for allowing me to be here this evening to share with your people from your word who came with the expectation to hear from you with a need in their heart. Lord, as the preacher gives invitation, Lord, I pray that you speak into the hearts. And Lord, you convict the hearts. And I pray that, Lord, if there is any soul that is that does not know you, Lord, as Lord and Savior, I pray that you convict that soul and save that soul this evening. Lord, bless this time of invitation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.